Of all the runs that Subaru has gone through regressing, I think the last episode's ending was one of the best. The way that he self-sacrificed himself, and no, this is not acting selfless. He understood that Betelgeuse kind of took over his body, and that's why Ia was expelled, right? And he runs out into the forest, and this is the finish line. We defeated all the fingers. We defeated everybody. And then at this moment, he decides to run away because if he stayed around, people would die. And then Julius and Felix, them crying as they're in agony, as they have to kill the hero that is Natsuki Subaru, man. It was just like such a good ending. Honestly, I prefer that he failed that run. Because I, I think that even though it was a failed run, we were able to get such a heroic ending. I truly believe that was... Yeah, the White Whale subjugation stint was very heroic, but like that ending of him self-sacrificing was so, so good. Him turning into Betrigus Romani Conti apparently was hinted, foreshadowed by Puck a while ago in like episode 18 or something. Subaru is prone to being possessed. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I thought that it had to do with the Witch's Miasma. I thought that maybe... I don't know if it's the affinity to spirits per se, but he is a candidate to become the next Betrigus Romani Conti. So next run, what do we have to do? We need to get rid of the fingers entirely in one go. And Subaru cannot exist. Somehow, I'm not sure how it works, but when Betrigus dies, I'm imagining his soul is like escaping out and then being implanted. So can we like capture the soul? I don't know how it's gonna go, but hey, let's see exactly where the checkpoint is in today's reaction. <laughs> where is the checkpoint, bro? <laughs> Uh, please, I imagine we have to do the whale again. There's no way. You know why I know there's no way it's gonna be whale? Because this is the penultimate episode of ReZero. There's only one more episode after this for season one. It doesn't make sense to go back before the whale subjugation. It's gonna be after. It has to be after, bro. <laughs> Wait! Why is Alpha guy? Why is Alpha guy here? Why is it trolling me? Go away! Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Alright, this is the end of the whale subjugation, and we're trying to strategize to see what we're gonna do with the witch hunt, right? Less. Yes, yes. God damn, that was awesome. Oh. Thank, thank you, Felix. Hey, even if no one's gonna remember Felix, you know, Natsuki Subaru's heroics last episode and all the sacrifice, at the very least, he gets some of this, right? Yo. What would happen if you did that? I know it's a joke. If you get killed by the whale's fog, you're forgotten. And the world kind of erases you. But if you, if you like, smoke that shit... How does that work? A new checkpoint! Thank God! I love how he just says this in front of everybody and nobody knows what he's talking about. He just casually says save point and everyone's like, what? Fingers! Betrugus. Possession. Yuli, you know? Mm -hmm. Another Chuni name. Well, this isn't really Chuni. The fog of erasure is Chuni. Returned by death is Chuni. Possession is just what it's doing, right? It's not too Chuni. I, I, I hope that he would have had a cooler name for this, though. Forgotten and the select number of them at that are thought to be capable targets, right? If you think about the last run, not every soldier of the, you know, Witch's Cult became Betrigus, only the 10 fingers. So if you imagine 100 people, 10 of them are like, you know, super high ranking NPCs in their, MP their fingers. Why? Because they have more of the Witch's Miasma, their love for the Witch is strong. So like, those people are vessels, and Subaru, just like them, has that level. And he's beyond them. He's like an Archbishop level of Miasma, so that makes sense. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
つまり指先の攻めがなされればヤツの魂は乗り移り先をヤツの最後と言えるだろう But like Subaru is the last candidate, so how do we make sure that the soul doesn't go to him? What is even the range? I don't know. Can we seal the soul? Can we like just elip like do damage to the soul like we do in Tensura? Agreed, Julius. <laughs> I too can get possessed. <laughs> what are they gonna think then? Why would you be able to give this? Because the witch's stench Fatala loves me. Yeah. Mm. 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 The discrimination and it's just Priscilla just fucking popping off. Poor Amelia. <laughs> Is this Amelia thoughts? <laughs> Amelia thoughts? <laughs> Damn. No wonder things are always dark when we're seeing Amelia recently, bro. That's all she ever thinks about. In last episode too, we learned that she went to the village to help people out because she thought the witch fiends are gonna attack on the villagers. Dude had a brooms and get the fuck out of here, you half devil. Leo. That's sad. <laughs> Amelia's not When the village. This guy actually had a fucking broom, bro. Petra, say something nice to her, please. We need Super here to catch her when she falls, man. And not doing that simp white knight shit. But to help her and be like partners, teammates, and grow together, man. Hmm. You need to think of them as tools, Amelia. You're too kind and naive. They're mere tools. Adopt the Ayana Kochi mindset, and they'll act the ways that you can't even imagine. <laughs> but she's too naive! She's too pure. She shouldn't have to think like that. いいんじゃないかな。僕はリアが何をしようとしてもリアの味方だし。でしょ？ラムが今朝早くまた村に向かってたから報告を待つべき。ちょっとベティの顔を見てくれ。What's Betty up to? Only helpful in fights when he's awake, and then everything else, Puck just... Is Puck helping? I don't know. Like, just do what you want to do, Amelia! <laughs> Bye! And, like, and Puck never shows up, and, and then when Amelia's dead, then he destroys the world, like... But, but again, like, you know, people like Reinhardt, Roswell, while there may be plot reasons, they are usually bent. You can't let these powerful beings like Puck also just... Harry, Emilia, you know? Emilia, sama. Okaksama go me any not famous. Wilhelm, oh. Oh, not the what's going on, man? Tosco. Biru Hero no Torias to Moshimas. Torias? Wait. Torias? Is that a lie? I thought it's Wilhelm von Austria. What's the Trias here? Is it a shortened form? Is it an alias right now to make sure she doesn't know? I thought that Wilhelm showed up here and already met Emilia. But no, Wilhelm was the carriage guy. He was talking with Subaru outside when we first saw him in Arc 3, so they never met. Amelia has no understanding of Wilhelm now. I don't know. His old name? Former last name? He really abandoned the Van Astra name? She, you tell me this guy fucking doesn't even say I love you to his wife until she dies and 14 years later then he says it, and now he's abandoning his wife's last name? She, Wilhelm, you really are the worst husband ever. <laughs> It was from Krush? The blank letter again! The blank letter again!
that blank letter is still so off. Like it's from us. It was blank letter, meaning like it could it could potentially mean a fucking war, right? Like like. But again, it's from Crucius side. We're just saying, oh, it's a mistake. Like what? Blank letter. It's still here. What the fuck? Who sent that shit from Crucius party? But who? Yeah. Being ambiguous about the cult. Alliance, okay? We already talked about that for Roswell's special rocks. <laughs> that last part? <laughs> Do you understand, little girl? Like, this last part <laughs> felt like. <laughs> You understand politics, right? Diplomacy. We get your mining rights and we're chill like that. Do you understand? <laughs> Felt a little patronizing. Like, come on, girl. You know how this shit works, right? Yeah, she gets it. She gets it. Okay. What the fuck is a sanctuary? Have we ever met the sanctuary before? Arc 2. Never. I've never heard of this shit. Roswell! Roswell mentioned! Wait! Roswell? Okay, so Roswell? Interesting. So he was in the kingdom to meet some officials. But after we subjugated the white whale, now he's heading towards the sanctuary. What is Roswell? What the fuck is he doing? Everything he does makes no sense to me. But apparently, Biko confirmed that Russell knows what he's doing, right? Even if my future is not secured, Russell's future is secured. Like, whatever he's doing, he knows what he's doing. I just can't comprehend it because all of his actions are so counterintuitive. Yeah, without you. Yeah. Wait, today she must. Subaru! Subaru wearing the Emilia onesie! That's the onesie she always wore to the village. The two pointy. What the? What you? Arimasen. Emilia Subaru. Nice acting. Sword demon mentioned. Apparently, it's not really truly sword saint. His official title is sword demon, right? Emilia Samo. And yeah, you're right. During the a conversation at the very end, she threw the onesie at her. Him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, where the hell did she did he get this? Did Ram get it? No, no, no. We had this all along. Does she not know who she is? Betty. Why? Alright. I mean, I don't I'm not really worried about Betty. I've seen Betty's powers. She's cracked. She's also hiding in a forbidden library by herself. Like I she's gonna be fine. Yeah, who's how they gonna find her? Contract. Contract with who? Roswell, probably. Betty must be some sort of spirit, right? We've been saying this from the earlier earlier parts of the episodes too, where spirit seems to form contract with other people. Betty Puck. You know, calls him Bubby, you know, Nichan. There's gotta be some spirit being tied to Betty. Little sister, see? Nichan, little sister. Puck is like Betty's big bro. Little sister, like, how does that work? I and mean, Puck is a great spirit, but they did say that spirits can take any form, so I'm totally fine with assuming Betty is a spirit, even though Puck's a cat. Puck the enabler. Do whatever you want, Amelia. You never do any wrong. Just keep doing you, girl. True. And once you die, I'll just destroy the world. But keep doing you, girl. Let's go. But she really doesn't. She really doesn't know who he is, huh? Does she not even realize her own clothing? And it's not like his tracksuit is all hidden either. I, I don't know. This fucking clothing... You gonna explain to me what this shit is? Petra. Yeah, 
She's gonna arrive with the kids? I mean, probably better this way. I doubt the kids are gonna be as mean as the adults. If she erodes in the carriage with the adult, they're gonna say, Half Devil! Evil Witch! Dude, the kids don't know either? This, this clothing just makes him disappear. Nobody knows who he is, even though he's just wearing a fucking cute-ass little hoodie thing, okay? True. She does assume that. Do you? Oh, are you? Who are you? This calls her by her first name. How do you know me? Yeah, she's a stinky half witch. Ew, half devil. Ew. Nah, these kids are nice. These kids are nice. The adults are rotten. Oh. お姉ちゃん、お芋の半個のお姉ちゃんでしょ。ペロステンプ。ペロステンプ。それは誰と楽しそうに話してるの。見たかも。え、一緒に行く。早く行こうぜ。おお、what <笑> Even though he sounds like him, even though his track pant is literally showing at the bottom here, this is not Subaru. It's Barusu. <laughs> Petra, do you know? Sanctuary mentioned again. Yeah, you better thank me. You have a debt you could never pay back. Oh, he's gone like Batman. Wow. He's gone, bro. Sick move. Somehow snuck in there with the hoodie and just, just saved everything and she has no idea it was in. That was interesting. Cult members! That's the guy that Felix baited, remember? In the carriage, that's the guy. What was that? He opens up some sort of pocket mirror shit. It glows blue. I don't know. なるほど。周りとの連絡手段だけが謎だったけど。ミティア。おお、すごい。Sorry、バルス。俺と意味は重いぜ、お前ら。遅い。Oh, that's a cool line, bro. 遅い。That's one of the classic enemy lines, right? 遅い。So fast. All right, all the fingers are gone. No, this is the last finger? I'm not really sure if they incapacitated all the fingers yet. What do you think this guy's thinking? It must be so fucked up to him. I had all these secret plans ready. Everything was ready. And this random dude in a fucking cute-ass hoodie shows up just understands my entire schemes. How could you know this? What the fuck? This is not fair! You just know? Yeah, he knows. Smart. And remember, from like everyone's perspective in these first runs, right? It must be so stupid. Like, how does this guy just know? Everything he's done is perfect in this line. He literally raw dogged the whale subjugation and now the witch's cults are just down like that? If you really think about the perspective of the other people in these perfect runs, like... <laughs> he's the all-knowing general strategist! He just knows how to do everything perfectly every time! Lesser spirits or just cap? Was that just cap? May the blessing of the spirits be with you. Did she just actually give the blessing of the spirits to them? Or is this just cap and just hopeful thinking? I'm not sure. I didn't see any effects here. Okay. Just role playing? LARPing? Wilhelm! Giga Chad! This is what enabled you to trick. Yeah, it did. She didn't know. What is this clothing? Oh, wait! Spell! Roswell! Oh. <laughs> okay. 
It's not him just hiding his face like that. It's okay, okay. There's an actual meaning. Roswell weaves a spell into it. Recognition. So, like, Amelia wears this in public because, of course, of the discrimination of being a half-elf. With this, people don't really know, even though they can see it, right? Not really like the Cloak of Invisibility in Harry Potter, but if you have this on, people can't really tell your identity. That's a powerful clothing. You think Roswell's thongs that we saw in the early Arc 2 episodes, it has some special spells in it? That's really interesting. How does that work? The thong of unrecognition. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she gave it to us. So like, when Amelia ended the conversation at the end, and she ran out and threw the robe at us, was that out of anger? Or was there a part of her that felt like you might need this more than me and threw it at him? Maybe just chance? Coincidence? Oh no. The blank letter again. <laughs> <laughs> is that Mimi in behind? I think it is. Okay. We have like a... <laughs> he even anticipated this because obviously Ram was going to fuck us up, right? So like, boom. Already, we have a sign ready for this. Oh nice, smart. The speech? The speech. Oh, he changed up the speech this time. Last time, he kind of lied to prevent mass panic, but this time it's not going to work. And last time, Ram clutched, but this time on her knees saying, Please, don't be a racist to her. <laughs> what does Ram think right now when looking at Subaru? <laughs> Pathetic. Kneeling as he should. No, I think Ram really does respect Subaru. <laughs> This fucking granny crying tears of joy. Go grope his ass one more time right now. Oh, she's getting lines! She's getting lines! She actually has a voice actor! And the lore still is, this guy is... A guy with dementia and he thinks that he is the village leader and P and that's why he's the fake village leader, right? I think, yeah, in memory, no, it's, it's the false village leader. But the, the dude literally has dementia, is role-playing as the leader of the village and everyone else is like, you know what? Let's just let him have it. Let's, come on, let's just give him it. The biggest conspiracy is that he's faking it. You think that he's just a poor old man. And saying, let's just, let him just enjoy his last days. Nah, he's faking it, bro. He's faking it, manipulating everyone here. That is my conspiracy theory. <laughs> Archbishop of Pride, that's him. Archbishop of Pride. <laughs> Only a being that could override his pride, right? Such a selfless being. Arch, this guy right now. Sin, Archbishop of Pride. Betrugus is a very diligent person, even though he represents sloth. It seems like the Archbishop of Sins, you know, wants to act differently than the sins that they represent. This guy also has overcome his pride and has put his ego down to be a dumb, babooning, fucking dementia old man. And therefore, he got this role. Yep, that's my headcanon. Yep, a lot of mental gymnastics happening right now. Ooh. Oh, she licks his heartstrings being tugged. That's a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah, that map. So that's what he was doing, right? Because he had his a map and a meaty in his hand, but that's the map he drew? No, he already had this shit. Meteor. Mimi! No prisoners. Oh, oh. back. What the? This dude just keeps coming back into the store at the most random times. Hello again. <laughs> I wondered why you hadn't shown up. You got caught. What the? Who are you? Because like he's always. Because in this timeline we've never met, right? 
we've never met before while trying to get to the mansion we met but this time it's like oh now you show up in the game Otto NPC yeah, I don't know who you are <laughs> things are going too well again I'm worried nah this is the run we don't have time we have one more episode after this we can't be affording fuck ups now <laughs> What are we doing? We gotta take down Betrugu still. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, I thought the boss bugged out for a second. Like, this is like an instance dungeon we walked into. I'm, I'm waiting for the cutscene to play. It's not playing. Where's the soundtrack? It's a little bit delayed. Soundtrack, hello? There it is. Alright, it's not bugged out. Such a diligent member has shown up! Chill! <laughs> I'm slothful for not being able to recruit you before. Oh my god, it's on me, bro. Slothful, slothful. <laughs> Are you allowed to speak on behalf of the witch like that? Would that be audacious? I feel like you gotta be kind of be careful with the crazy person like this, but maybe Better Goose is fine with it. This oh! Alright, we got him. <laughs> See? We're even hugging. There's a timeline where I feel like we could be friends, man. <laughs> Emilia. More lore. Okay. My original theory from the beginning was that the day of the ordeal was some sort of ceremony to awaken the witch and Amelia was some sort of sacrifice, vessel, key, catalyst, but it's a vessel. Okay, so Satala will then possess Amelia's body? So even in that one run when Amelia was dead and we showed up in the road and Betrigus is like, oh my god, you're so diligent. The first step of the ordeal is already done. Remember, there's like multiple ordeals, right? It's not like one ordeal. The first ordeal was getting the body. Ah. So does that make even more sense now with the original theory being like in the loot cellar when he first dies, Subaru, his desire to save a million no matter what was what enticed the Witch of Envy to give him the regression power so that the body would be intact and safe until it was delayed, like given to the day of the ordeal. Does that make sense? That the Satala, the Witch of Envy, knew that Subaru would take good care of her future body. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. But she's still envious of Subaru and her, his love for Amelia. I'm not sure, but things are starting to make a little bit more sense. Possess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be her vessel, right? The flesh of Amelia will be there, but like her personality won't be there. Satala will be reborn into this world, right? Vessel. But what if she's not? If she proves a worthy vessel for the witch, discard her. Like, it's gotta work. What if there's a compatibility issue? I don't know. She killed Amelia though in that run? Yeah, she did. Because maybe you don't need the body to be alive? Because Betrigus is still happy no matter what. His dialogue when Amelia was already dead, Betrigus is fine with Amelia being a corpse there. He was perfectly fine. That was the first step of the ordeal. Dead or alive, once possessed, I guess it doesn't matter. Or it was just a... And even if that line with Betrigus didn't happen, I bet Satala is just such a crazy bitch that like, hey, this run is ruined in a different timeline, I'll possess their body. This is just like a warning shot for you. I don't know. But I think that dead or alive, it doesn't matter. Oh, one more other logical inconsistency that I had in that episode was when, uh, fucking... 
I said that why even give Subaru the power in that loot seller run? Because Amelia was killed by Elsa in that run. If all you need is the corpse, why bother? Elsa is hired by the witch's cult to do this. But someone also hinted in a non-spoilerish way of like, do you really think so? You think that Elsa was actually hired directly by the Archbishop and shit? I'm like, so you're telling me I still have a chance. So you're telling me, so maybe there isn't that, isn't a logical inconsistency. I, I don't know. Yeah. He, he knows about this. He knows about this. How is he gonna get over the fucking gospel this time? Meet Nokia flip phone? Russell Fellows might already have it, I'm not sure. No, we haven't met him yet. What are we gonna do with the gospel? Not this. I left it at home again. Meet ya? So they what? Oh, that's the meeting we stole. Yeah. From the other guy. Felix! Patrice! First blood! Nice! What do I think of it? I can see it, bitch. Also, um, dude, someone told me that in episode 15, when Rem was getting twisted and we, none of us could see the unseen hand, apparently Subaru could. And I'm like, are you serious, bro? I thought the reason, I thought the whole point was that he couldn't see it before, but with the iterations of regressions and his miasma stacking up, it's at a level where he can see the hands. I thought that in 15 that you couldn't see it. In the anime, for the anime shown us, none of us could see anything, but the cave was really dark. In the anime, he could? No, I don't think so. That's not confirmed at all. Again, everyone just gaslighting me. Anime watchers, light novel watchers, and no one is consistent. Everyone is literally saying that they're light novel readers and say like, yes and no at the same time. I honestly have motherfuckers coming into my comment section straight up saying they're both read the light novels, but it's opposite answers. I'm like, has any, are you guys reading the same shit? What's going on? Yeah. Oh. Remember my analogy of this? Better Goose is a long time subscriber to Satala's OnlyFans. But every time Better Goose renews the monthly subscriptions and sends her a DM, she never answers. But Subaru, he don't even pay for that shit. He gets it for free. He can get her anytime she wants, bro. All these simps wish they could be Subaru, but I'm, I'm sorry, man. She loves him for whatever reason, I don't know. What the? I can talk to her, bro. Do you even know what color of lipstick Satala wears? Purple. I'll give you that for free. Grab the heart, truly. Literally. He's such a memeable guy. What the fuck? Let's go, Dude, what the fuck do they feed these cult members? How are they running as fast as Patrash? Also, like, what, 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 what do they do during cult me member lessons, bro? These foot soldiers are running as fast as a land dragon. They also have perfect accuracy with throwing daggers. Like, holy shit. Put them in the fucking league. They're all Olympic athletes. <laughs> Mimi. Mimi. <laughs> Mimi TV. <laughs> Yay, indeed. They can't see the hand. So to everyone, he's just floating. To everyone, he's just literally just, just floating in the sky like this, but we can see it. He's such a memeable character. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of cute though. Oh, come on. Is he creepy? Guys, I think he's so cute. <laughs> Ah, 
Thanks, Mimi. Satala's number one man. Oh, the sloth is getting the revenge against the sloth, bro. Remember? Mr. Sloth is alive! See, this is the interesting thing anytime he mentions the Gospels. A lot of the things that Betrugu says is riddled in such weird analogies and metaphors. But he did say, hmm, according to my Gospel, Natsuki Super, you are not in the account. Now he's saying, none of this is in the Gospel in the Guide to My Destiny. The Gospel just seems to be a set of instructions, a manual, some sort of script. Because, like, he literally checked if Subaru was supposed to show up. As someone claiming to be Pride was supposed to show up, he checked that and he was like, no, you're not here. So, like, what does the gospel have in it? It sounds like none of this is in the gospel. The gospel tells him of things to do. You must do this. You must do that. However, this is an unknown variable. I... I know this. I True. <laughs> oh, he's still saying it. Oh, he's still saying Emilia's knight. You think Julius here would give him the knight pass or still gatekeep him from being a knight? I don't know. Giga Subaru. Oh. Wait. Yo, is this the cliff? Yo, is this Arc 2 cliff? It is, right? The, the jacket rocks. Whoa! And then this is the spot we're gonna fight better. Whoa, that is full circle, man. Wow. That means we're gonna get a cliffhanger. <laughs> that means we're literally gonna get a fucking cliffhanger in front of a cliff. Yeah, he jumped off! After Drill Lolly, boing! We're gonna actually 1v1? Yeah. Is there another face to this? Oh. It's gotta be Julius. One that I have in common. Because it's Julius and Seaver, it hasn't been that good. And the spirits were really effective against, you know, the other fingers, right? It's gotta be Yuli, bro. Yuli, show out! Yes! Spirit Knight! Let's go, Spirit Knight! So we jump off the cliff and we die. But Yuli jumps off the cliff and he has spirits guiding his fall down, right? That's what's going on, right? The spirits help them just like soften. Oh, no more Yuli! No more Yuli! Alright, we're back to it! Apparently. It's supposed to be royal knights. And the reason that it's not imperial knights is because when you say imperial, you're inferring that there's an empire. And an empire is different from a kingdom. A kingdom has royalty. An empire has imperial forces. Therefore, Dragon Kingdom Lunica is royal knights. I don't know why it says imperial. Mm -hmm. Spirit Knight! Patrash, best girl! 2v1! What's he gonna do? Oh, he can tell him where the unseen hands are, but other than that, what can he do? Shamak? Taunt? Yep. Yep, it was justified, I agree. Oh, the awareness. Oh, oh my god, he's so profound and deep and enlightened. Are we best bros now? We're gonna trust each other? I hate you too. That's embarrassing. But I think we could be really good friends, man. Greatest night. Ooh. Reinhardt, yo, Reinhardt getting thrown into the bus. I think that right now we're much on better terms with Julius than Reinhardt too. Because like, we told Reinhardt off and that was included in this run, remember? Saying like, stay out of my fucking business. Well, he muttered that to himself after he sent Reinhardt off, but greatest night, huh? All right. Let's go, brothers. My shame attests. 
I'm surprised you listened to their entire dialogue, Betrigis. You had no reason to just sit there and listen, but I guess the dialogue was that compelling. I mean, some you're capping right now. What do you mean you don't know about sloth, bro? You've been slothful. I've seen you. We got a guy that can see us. Yep. Honestly, if we told him that he could see it too, I bet he would have been even more mentally tilted. He always gets so upset when other people can see it. Some people are saying shit like, you know, it's because it's the witch's power, unseen, you know, hand that like, it's supposed to be a love between us two, but then other people can see it, therefore it's just like not fair or some shit. Subaru is the vision. Like Nect? Nect was the spell that connected people's gates and could hear the thoughts. So there must be a way to connect the visions right now. That's what's going on? Yeah. Like last time, right? When we freed everyone from the illusion shit, Nect was used to connect the gates. So we're really intimate right now. We're like together. We're like inside each other. We're so intimate. This is more intimate than me and like Subaru and Amelia will ever be, I think. Oh, he crazy. Let's go. My friends! My friend Natsuki Subaru, he says. The self proclaimed knight and the greatest knight is today's episode title. And damn, bro. Wow. Wow. This is how we make up to you on top of that. This is beautiful because, again, the self proclaimed knight is from the beginning of Arc 3 when he just completely fumbled, right? But he did call Julius the greatest knight. So now we have a fake knight and a real knight working together as brothers. They hate each other's guts. But right now, we are one. And this is looking so hype, man. Of course we get a fucking cliffhanger. As we do, because we ended up in a cliff. But it's kind of cool to see it becoming all full circle. This run is fantastic. Thank God the checkpoint was not before the White Whale subjugation, but, you know, metagaming how many episodes there are left in the season. It's kind of unreasonable to believe that it's going to happen before the whale fight, right? Subaru gets away with some suspicious things, saying like, Oh yeah, it can possess me too, but I think it's, it makes sense. He's earned the right to be suspicious, and other people will be more lenient and favorable because of the actions that he has shown. Amelia? My heart breaks for her, man. She's getting so depressed. She's, she's getting wrinkles on her forehead, and you know what Puck does? Puck does nothing. <laughs> Puck just fucking floats there and says, You do what you want, Amelia. I guess it doesn't make sense for, like, I, you, what do you want me to Puck to be a mentor? I, Puck is just there as, like, a guiding wheel, right? It's like, Puck's goal, I mean, it'd be nice if Puck would actually help, but we've seen time after time that Puck isn't really here to guide Amelia into specific directions. He wants Amelia to come up with her own answers, and it is what it is. Subaru's magical robe, sorry, Roswell's magical robe, sorry. Roswell embedded the magic shit into the robe so that when Amelia wears it, no one can see it. It works for Subaru as well. If you wear this shit, people don't really know who you are, so this is a way for her to go out in public and do stuff like that. Otto shows up finally. I wonder what kind of part he's going to have in the story right now. And besides that, it's just... Subaru understanding every point of the witch's cult's plans and just canceling it, nullifying it before it even begins. And truly, think about from the perspective of these people, the fingers. Unreal that this dude just knew fucking everything. Just like the perspective of other people in Subaru's perfect run must be so fucking absurd. And I'm sure other people must be like respecting him thinking, oh my god, this guy is a genius strategist. Um, Patrash had a good attack. There is more dialogue with the gospel as well. And I think that it's not clear. It's not 100% clear. 
but the gospel seems to have some sort of guide, some sort of set of instructions that Betrugu should be following in order for the day of the ordeal to be completed. And Naski Subaru is not in it, right? Even this right now, this is an unknown variable. Very interesting what's happening with the gospel. I thought it'd be like some sort of Ten Commandments shit and say, thou shalt not, thou shalt not subscribe to other girls, only fans, only Satella, but I don't really know beyond that. The day of the ordeal is some uh, kind of like a mini part of, you know, awakening Satella. Emilia is a vessel. If she is not compatible, she's discarded. If she is, that's fine. So that's kind of interesting that Emilia potentially could not be the right vessel as well. I wonder what, what are the parameters, right? What determines if she is the correct vessel for Satella? Aside from the aesthetics of being a, like a, a silver haired, a silver haired half elf, I wonder what exactly determines, you know, like the compatibility, but I'm sure that's going to be future season garb, uh, future season content. And then it's just better to give versus Julius, just bromance happening in his finest. We are together. Our eyes are his vision and we're going to slay better to together next episode. One more episode left. We got the finale. I got the suit out. And then we go into season two. That's it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for even more content. And until next time, take care.